No matter what you're moving on your belt conveyor system, minimizing downtime and safely maximizing productivity are always top priorities. And the way you choose to splice your belt can significantly affect these issues. That's why it's so important to get the facts before you decide how to splice your belt. Most belt operations rely on one of two common splicing methods. The first, vulcanization, involves joining belt ends through heat, compression, and or chemicals. The second involves joining belt ends together with mechanical belt fasteners. Which one is right for you? The only way to find out is to understand the facts. Mechanical fasteners are easy to install, cost-effective, and make great temporary or permanent splices. In fact, most mechanical splices can be installed right at the conveyor by your on-site crew, often in an hour or less. Vulcanizing requires a special crew that may or may not be readily available, and once the crew arrives, it usually requires several hours to complete a splice. Here's another thing you may not know. Mechanical belt fasteners are compatible with almost any type of belt, new or worn, rubber or solid woven PVC. And most belts are specifically designed to work with mechanical fasteners. In fact, your belts don't even have to be clean or new to work well with mechanical fasteners. Unlike vulcanization, mechanical fasteners aren't generally affected by residue, temperature, moisture or level of wear. So they're ideal for challenging environments. Plus, if they're well designed and properly selected, mechanical fasteners won't cause hang-ups on belt cleaners, pulleys, and other conveyor components. Today, most fasteners, like those made by Flexco, are designed with low profiles and smooth coined edges, so they work with fastener-friendly belt cleaners. Flexco fasteners can also be countersunk to create splices that are virtually flush with the belt surface. So now that you know the facts, you may be wondering, which splicing method is stronger? Naturally, splicing your belt will always cause a weak point in the belt, so both methods compromise belt strength to some degree. With vulcanizing, it comes down to the way the belt is cut. In a standard step splice, for example, the belt loses one ply of strength. To put it another way, a three-ply belt will lose one-third of its strength when spliced with a standard vulcanized step splice. And that's if it's done flawlessly. An imperfect splice, like those caused by humidity, old equipment, hurried crews, or dirty environments, will lose even more strength. Mechanical fasteners achieve their holding power through penetration and compression, but that doesn't necessarily mean they damage your belt fibers. In fact, Flexco makes fasteners that actually push carcass fibers aside so that holding elements can pass between them. Plus, we have fasteners that are specially engineered to withstand extremely heavy loads and perform with high tension belts. But no matter which splicing method you choose, keep in mind that your belt and splice will wear over time. The difference is that with mechanical fasteners, you won't be caught off guard. That's because fasteners can be visually monitored, allowing you to anticipate and schedule maintenance. Vulcanized splices tend to wear on the inside, making predictive replacement difficult. Some belting companies are working to resolve this problem by offering high-tech splice monitoring systems to aid in identifying internal wear. At the end of the day, both vulcanized and mechanical splices can be effective ways to join belt ends. Choose the option that makes the most sense based on the condition of your belts, the demands of your system, and the amount of downtime your operation can afford. Which brings us to our last point. No matter how you choose to splice your belts, make sure you do it safely. A variety of tools are available to safely hold and prepare the belt for proper splicing. If you have questions on which splicing method may be right for you, contact Flexco today for more information.